Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Last week I showed you how to mix and use browns in your painting process. This week I thought I would show you the principles discussed in last week's video in practice. I am going to show you the painting of this spaniel but with an emphasis on how I achieve those colours in my browns. Let's get straight into the video and I will speak about what I am doing as I go along. This dog was painted in 15 hours on oil painting paper. You'll see from the video that I cover the paper with my first layer. I am using the paint straight from the tube, but I am using it very thinly in a sort of scumbling layer. I am making an educated guess about what I am looking at in terms of value, colour and temperature. I cannot accurately judge what I have laid down until I've got it covered in paint. So I expect it to be out in areas, which is why I lay the paint thinly. It keeps my painting flexible so I can change things easily. Once I've covered the whole thing in paint, I'll then work my way back over it with slightly thicker paint, adjusting where I need to and paying more attention to my edges. Most of my edges will be soft, some will be lost and I'll have a few hard edges too but I'll make these decisions in the second pass. Generally speaking, the paint in my darker areas are not as thick as the lighter areas due to the addition of white. White is opaque and therefore makes paint more dense. I'm using a combination of Art Master brushes. These ones are pretty wrecked, but I like them this way. They are short handled, so easy to spot from the video when I'm using them. These ones are my workhorse and great for laying the paint thicker. I'm also using some long handled rosemary combers. These ones are good for laying wet on top of wet and also give me a lovely fur effect without having to try too hard. I'm using no medium in my paint. That's my process taken care of. Now I want to speak about my palette. I am using cadmium yellow, yellow ochre light, transparent oxide yellow, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, transparent red oxide, ultramarine deep and titanium zinc white. Whilst this spaniel is brown in colour, the complementaries I will be using are red and green. Red and green gives me my warm cool palette. Red is my warm colour and green is my cool colour. Remember also that when I mix red and green together, it gives me a brown. I'm going to mix up a few colours that will be useful also. The first one is a red-black. This consists of transparent red oxide, alizarin crimson and a small amount of ultramarine deep. I will also mix up a mid-tone red of cadmium red and yellow ochre light. The yellow ochre light just takes a punch out of my cadmium red and makes it more usable. I'm also going to mix up a couple of greens. My black green will be a mixture of ultramarine deep and transparent yellow oxide. My mid-tone green will be a mixture of ultramarine deep and yellow ochre light. I'm also going to mix myself up a base brown. I will always use this as a starting point for my mid-browns and then adjust it according to what I think I see. This brown contains some of my black red and also a good amount of yellow ochre light. This base brown is warm as I have used predominantly warm colours in its mixture. When I start painting, I ask myself how light or dark is it? If it is a black, am I seeing warm or cool? A lot of this spaniel is quite dark. Whether I use my red black or my green black depends upon what is next to it. For example, if the area next to it is cool, I will use my red black. If it is warm, I will use my cool black. Remember what I said earlier, when I mix red and green together, it gives me brown. So I do not need to mix a dark black brown. Mixing these two together will give me the same thing, or laying the black red next to the black green will give the illusion of brown. This is called broken colour. That takes care of my blacks. As I move into my mid-tone browns, I ask myself, is it warm or is it cool in relation to the area it is next to? If it is warm, do I need to adjust my base brown? 
Remember, I have three reds on my palette and each one will give me a different brown. If I am seeing more of a burgundy brown, I am more likely to use my Elysian Crimson. If it is more of a red brown, I am more likely to add my orange. If it is more of a really glossy, rich, deep brown, I am more likely to add my transparent oxide red. For every colour you have on your palette, you should understand what it does when you add it to your mixes. If you are not sure, I would suggest taking colours away and perhaps using a limited palette for a while. Then as you get more confident with four colours, you can begin to add more in. If my mid-tone brown is cool, I have the option of my black green or my mid-tone green to cool it down. Remember, if I use my black green, this will affect the value too. I also have the option of adding white, as this too will cool down my brown. But generally, I wouldn't recommend only adding white. You need to add some green to it too. If we are going to take advantage of our complementaries, just adding white won't be as effective as adding the colour opposite of green to our red first. If I zoom in close to my finished painting, you will see that a warm colour is always laid next to a cooler colour. I am just working my way around the painting alternating between green and red, which is added to my base brown, depending upon how much of each of the colour hues I think I see. Think of it as a sliding scale. On one side I have a red brown and on the other I have a green brown. As I mix one into the other, the colour hue will begin to change until I have a 50-50 mix right in the middle. Remember, this will be different depending upon what red I select on my palette and what green I decide to use. Remember also that darker colour will affect the value, as will lighter colours. As I move into my lighter browns, I treat them no differently. I ask myself, am I seeing warm or am I seeing cool in relation to what it is next to? It is all relative. For areas that are lighter but still quite saturated in colour, I will use more of the transparent red oxide. This is because it holds its colour better when added with white. So these areas here around the eyes and on top of the head are a mixture of transparent red oxide, yellow ochre light, cadmium yellow and white. Elysian crimson mixed with my black green and the addition of white will also give me these really lovely cool colours that you can see around this area here. It almost looks purple and I've used the same combination but with less white in the area under the chin. If I want to push it a little warmer, I just add more red brown. I treat my whites no differently. Notice I have a much warmer red white on this side where I have used more transparent red oxide, Elysian crimson, yellow ochre light and white. It then becomes cooler once I start adding my greens. Then as I add a few areas of white, the coolness of this colour makes my other mixes around it seem quite warm. Use a brush like a coma and drag your whites into the other colours. Don't use any medium, just use it straight from the tube. I have a slightly stiffer coma brush which is great for when I am doing white areas. One thing I'll say about the brushwork is don't be tempted to try and paint the detail of the fur as you see it in the reference photo. For example, if you look at the ears and compare them to the reference photo, I have painted the impression of fur rather than as it appears in the photo. If I had tried to paint it as it appears, it would have completely detracted from my spaniel's face. It is the same if you are painting hair. You do not need to paint every strand. Select a bigger brush and just paint the impression of what you see. It will give your painting a more realistic appearance if you do it this way. And here it is the finished painting. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.